What are you afraid of and why? We'll talk about that next on Polygamy, What Love Is This? She was born into polygamy. Her family followed the teachings of Joseph Smith, all of them, including plural marriage, especially plural marriage. Like many young girls, she had been promised to a man who was her father's age. But she fled. She ran away. She preferred an eternity of outer darkness to a life of polygamy. She chose hell over religious enslavement. That girl was me. After I fled, I thought I was free, but I realized I wasn't free. I was lost, alone, desolate. No home, no hope, no life. Then Jesus Christ found me and rescued me and he loved me. In his love, I found real freedom, a real home, a real life. And Jesus offers you the very same thing. He is a shield to all who will take refuge in him. He has been a refuge for me and he can be for you too. Knowing the surpassing love of Jesus Christ today, this is why I can look back and ask, Polygamy? What love is this? Welcome to our show tonight. We are grateful that you've decided to share part of your evening with us. And I am your host, Doris Hansen, and we do hope that you enjoy what we're going to be talking about tonight. But first, I'd like to let you know that there is a very special Weekend to Remember Marriage Getaway that's taking place at the Park City Marriott Hotel the weekend of November 2nd through the 4th. And this weekend is especially for married couples or soon to be married couples. You can go to the website www. Uh, familylife.com slash weekend and if you use the group name God's Plan you can go for half price. You can also call Ross or Teresa Callahan for more information and their number is 801-253-2952 that's 253-2952 now this getaway will help you and your mate discover God's plan for your marriage and will uh, refresh your marriage God's way and speaking of God's plan for marriage, polygamy isn't and it never was. The longer we work with the broken lives of the people that we help from polygamy, the more we realize how ugly polygamy really is. We do not hate polygamists, but we do hate the practice of polygamy that destroys lives. And as someone once said, it can make good men bad and bad men into monsters. We've talked before on our show about the never ending victimization of the women, especially the mothers who get out of polygamy, but continue to be hounded and railroaded and threatened and intimidated and even though polygamy is against the law the ones that are in polygamy are treated better by the prevailing justice system than the ones who get out and we can't help but wonder why you know we've been helping a woman and a mother who is a mother who has fled polygamy she was married to a person who viciously beat his wives he lied in court he makes his wives pay him rent he doesn't support his wives or his children, and yet the court threatens to give custody of the children to the polygamist husband. And we again wonder, how can this be? Any, and, and, and to make it worse, she has difficulty getting an attorney that will help her, and there's no explanation of why the attorneys won't. We wonder if the attorney who has uh, offered to help her in the past has been intimidated by the polygamist for daring to help someone who got away and who was bold enough to stand up against them. How can anyone in good conscience walk away 
and leave a desperate, struggling woman to fare for herself against a polygamist ex-husband who constantly threatens to take away her little children and against a court system that seems to prefer polygamists. What is wrong here and why does it continue? Christians who are watching the show tonight, I'm asking you if you would please pray for this woman. Would you please pray that God would undertake on behalf of this woman? Would you pray that God will come to her defense and in a final act of power and justice against her abusive and intimidating polygamist ex-husband? Pray for her safety and pray that her children will not be forced into legal custody of her polygamous father, of their polygamous father, and they are afraid to go with him. Would you please pray for an attorney that will help her? Uh, uh, an attorney that would be excited and that has a boatload of zeal for justice that she and the situation deserves. And I need to remind our viewers again that polygamy is illegal. So why are the ones getting out the ones who are hurt the most by our system? Our legal and political system offers little or no mercy to those who manage to get out and live a legal life. And why would the courts and the judges even ever consider giving child custody to a polygamous man in favor of their mother who managed to get out and wants to make a better life for herself? And where are the hearts of the attorneys who should be stepping up and offer their services once in a while, free of charge, to those escapees who want to support themselves and their families, and they want to do it in peace, but the system and the polygamous man won't leave them in peace. You know, a few months ago, we talked with a man who had left the Harmston Polygamy Group and agreed to tell it all on our show tonight. Well, the Harmston Group is based, if you're not familiar with it, in Manti, Utah. However, a couple of weeks ago, our guest who was going to be here backed out, and so we're left without a guest tonight. But then that's okay, because it gives us the opportunity to talk about fear and how effectively the polygamous groups use fear and threats and shame and shunning and guilt to force people to remain in their religious system. And if they do leave, it intimidates them to keep their mouths shut, as was the case with our scheduled guests for tonight. This is not a new topic on our show. We've talked about it before, but for our new viewers and for those who need to be reminded, we're going to revisit some of the ugliness of the fear that has always fed this culture, and it still does. Our guest backed out because he had been intimidated and threatened, and fear controlled his decisions. From the moment that section 132 of the Mormon Doctrine and Covenants, from the moment that it was a seedling germinating in the mind of Joseph Smith, fear was a huge part of the technique that Joseph Smith would use to force women and girls to become his plural wives. And fear continues to be a powerful force that keeps women in the grip of polygamous relationships and polygamy groups. God never intended for humans to live polygamy, and God never intended for us to live by fear. Any religion that uses fear and guilt as weapons of manipulation to stop people from leaving are false religions. They preach blind obedience, you owe them your time, you owe them your money, and sadly, they get it. Mind control is a dishonest pressure that is placed on the victim and it causes fear. It's a weapon like a gun. Obey or we'll ruin you. For instance, they'll say, if you leave our group, you'll lose everyone you love forever. Or they'll say, if you don't comply and obey, you won't go to heaven, you'll go to hell. Or give us your money so both you and, and we can succeed. And these are damnable lies. They're not true. False religions and polygamy groups use these tactics which are designed to produce fear and to keep the membership in their control. And that gives them power over you and your family. They control your mind, your actions, your future, your planning. They control everything. And you'll live in constant fear of what will happen if you leave the group. I know about this. It happened to me. I talk to people all the time in this culture, and it's happened to them as well. 
I'm talking to many viewers right now who are living in this precise fear. The guests that we were going to have on tonight's show live daily in that fear. Even after living the polygamy group, he's never been free from the implanted fear. Night and day, the fear stalks him, and the polygamous leaders just love it that way. Many of you who have been raised in this culture will deny that you have been born and bred on fear, even though you may be living every day in that same fear. I feel so bad for our guest who chose to react to the implanted fear rather than turn to God for eternal safety. The leadership of many polygamists are nothing but primitive bullies who hold their members in emotional blackmail and barter away their eternal life. And the members fear their threats rather than trusting God who could save and protect them and their families. And I'm not mocking this person who didn't come tonight. I understand him completely. I have been there. I've done that. I've suffered through resulting nightmares for years and years and years after I left. And until I discovered God's love, the implanted fear continued its ugly work deep down in my soul. And the root of that fear was Joseph Smith and section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants. And the following verses are among those that spawn the hellish fear that this culture uses against its own people. Doctrine and Covenants section 132 verse 4 says, For behold, I reveal unto you a new and an everlasting covenant. And if you abide that covenant, then are ye damned. If ye abide not that covenant, then are ye damned. For no one can reject this covenant and be permitted to enter into my glory. And it goes on in verse 6. And as pertaining to the new and everlasting covenant, it was instituted for the fullness of my glory. And he that receiveth the fullness thereof must and shall abide the law, or he shall be damned, saith the Lord. Verse 52. And let mine handmaid, Emma Smith, receive all those that have been given unto him, my servant Joseph, and who are virtuous and pure before me. And those who are not pure and have said they were pure shall be destroyed, saith the Lord. 54. And I command mine handmaid, Emma Smith, to abide and cleave unto my servant Joseph and to none else. But if she will not abide this commandment, she shall be destroyed, saith the Lord. For I am the Lord thy God, and will destroy her if she abide not in my law. Wow, that shows a lot of love, doesn't it? Section 132 of the New and Everlasting Covenant is polygamy. All the polygamy groups know it. Emma Smith knew it. Mormon polygamists through the following 175 years knew it. The context of section 132 proves it's all about polygamy. Joseph Smith threatened hell and damnation and eternal destruction to Emma if she didn't comply with polygamy and accept his plural wives. The weapon of fear just like a gun ready to go off, continues to be used. Follow the leader blindly, obediently, faithfully, or you'll be damned. And where did Jesus ever say that? You know what? That's garbage that Satan uses to hold people in his clutches. And Satan is a cruel master, and he uses fear as a very powerful and authoritative weapon to keep people from the simple and beautiful love of God. Here is some biblical advice that I'd like to give you. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We can either believe Joseph Smith or take God at his word. We need to test the spirits. How often do you test the spirits of what your leadership says? And you know, the only legitimate test is the Bible. You see, some spirits are not from God. They come from false prophets and false apostles and false teachers. I'd also like to talk about 1 John chapter 4, verse 6, where it says, We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit 
of falsehood. You see, there are spirits, spirits of truth and spirits of falsehood. And whenever we discuss biblical truths on this program, 1 John chapter 4, verse 6 proves to be true every single time because this culture will not listen to what God has to say. They listen to Joseph Smith instead. They listen to man instead of God. Our next verse helps us to see that fear is not a tool of God. Love is. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. You know, God didn't just say He loves us. He proved it <clears throat> by dying on the cross for our sins. And what could polygamy possibly have to do with that? How can polygamy trump that? 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So what do you choose? The fear or the love? God isn't the author of this horrid fear and guilt that permeates our entire culture. As I already illustrated, beginning with Joseph Smith, fear has been used as a nasty weapon to keep people in bondage to Joseph Smith's religion. Joseph Smith, like the devil, uses fear. God uses love. Every day, this culture pushes the, pushes the buttons of fear in their members. And every day, God holds out His arms to a people who are blind and who reject Him. God's love, the true love that God uses to draw people to His truths, that love will drive out fear. You're not supposed to live in fear. God's love doesn't instill fear. It removes it. The polygamists use fear. But God's love can replace your fear, if, your fear if you will let Him do it. And the fear of man and man's doctrines are not compatible with God's love. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 and 6 says, For He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You know, when we have God... We don't need to fear man. You, do, do you have a holy and reverent fear of God or are you living under an unholy fear of man or men? Psalm 56 verse 4 says, In God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? And verse 11 says, in God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do unto me. And Psalm 118 verse 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. We are only to fear God. Not man, not men, not doctrine, not Joseph Smith, not section 132, and not the bullies of your leadership. We pray that our guest who was too afraid to come tonight will find God's love someday and then he can stop running in fear. And we say to every leader of every polygamy group and we extend our message also to the leaders of the Mormon church. No one needs you when they have Jesus and they don't need you to get Jesus and having Jesus is all that matters. Next, I want to read and respond to an email that I received from a woman who took sharp exception to our show. I'm going to read the letter in increments and respond to each increment as we go through the letter. She said, I am a member of the LDS Church and I'm confused about the purpose of your show. If your show is about the harms of polygamy, why are you discussing the current beliefs of the LDS Church? Well, my answer to that is our show is not necessarily about the harms of polygamy, and I don't believe that we have ever said that, although it certainly it covers the harmful aspects of polygamy. Our purpose is to bring biblical truths to polygamists and to anyone else watching so that way they can know and will know that Joseph Smith lied to them. His lies include the threat of practicing polygamy to earn eternal life. 
God didn't command polygamy. It was Joseph Smith who commanded polygamy. And she continued to write, The LDS Church does not practice polygamy and has not practiced polygamy for many years. You are misrepresenting my church even with the name of your show. If you are going to be discussing LDS doctrine, then the title of your show should not, should not suggest that the subject of the show is polygamy because as I studied early, or stated earlier, modern, modern LDS members do not practice polygamy. Well, first of all, our show is always about polygamy. We always discuss polygamy and point it towards what polygamists believe. If the Mormons believe that, well, if the shoe fits, wear it. Nor what we do, nor have we ever said that the present day LDS church practices polygamy. We do say that polygamy was introduced into American society by Joseph Smith. It was practiced by the first seven presidents of your church and is currently practiced on a spiritual level as Mormon men are sealed to multiple women and expecting to be one great big happy family in heaven and throughout eternity and they've got a big surprise waiting for them. Polygamy has everything to do with Mormonism. She went on to write, I have studied the scriptures extensively. I do not excuse the questions that I have about my church. I study and seek out answers. I'm offended that this show is giving the image that the LDS church is currently advocating polygamy or the practice thereof. My answer, we wonder why so many Mormons are offended when we merely discuss truthful history of your church and you defend it tooth and nail. Yet you never defend Jesus. You never defend his word. You never defend God's integrity and you never defend his gospel. You defend Mormonism and you defend Joseph Smith, which clearly reveal, reveals where your heart is. And besides that, Mormon history is also my history. It's the history of the polygamist, so we do have the right to talk about it. And as for your studying the scriptures, it's a pity that doesn't include the Bible. But then again, your recent leader, Mr. Hinckley, advised your people not to study so diligently because too many of them were studying themselves right out of your church. You know what? Honest study will always reveal truth and deceit. She wrote, Polygamy is a part of the history of the LDS church, just like slavery is a part of our American history. History is the past. Just because it was acceptable at one point does not mean that it's acceptable now. Accusing LDS members of condoning polygamy is like accusing Americans of condoning slavery. Begging your pardon, ma'am, the comparison of Mormon polygamy to American slavery is stupid and misguided argument. Mormon polygamy and slavery are not equal historical events for many, many reasons, and some of them are number one. At no time in American slavery did a man rise up and say, Thus saith the Lord, thou must practice slavery of the Negroes or be damned. But Joseph Smith did that with polygamy. Number two. No time in American slavery did a man say that God sent an angel with a sword to kill him if he didn't practice slavery. But Joseph Smith did that with polygamy. Number three, no time in American slavery did a man say that his salvation depended upon his practicing slavery. But Joseph Smith did that with polygamy. Number four, you said just because it was acceptable at one point does not mean it's acceptable now. Ma'am, polygamy was never acceptable. It was never lawful anywhere and everywhere that the Mormons fled to practice polygamy. It was illegal. It was illegal everywhere in the United States territories and in every United States state. It was illegal in Canada and Mexico. Sadly, Slavery was legal, but American slavery was publicly and unequivocally renounced and rejected both as an idea and as a practice. That never happened with Mormons and polygamy. Instead, the Mormon leadership sort of removed the practice, but not the doctrine. 
the doctrine is still there, there's a huge difference. And until the Mormon church comes out and publicly declares that polygamy is evil as a doctrine and as a practice, and until they openly renounce past doctrines concerning polygamy, and until they remove section 132, then the American slavery analogy just won't fly. Number five, when was slavery ever proclaimed as being a necessity for becoming a god? The early Mormons said polygamy is essential for celestial glory and for earning godhood. Number six, some slave owners misrepresented the Bible by claiming that slavery was okay with God. And just like polygamists, they took verses out of context. They misapplied and they misrepresented many verses to make it look like God said uh, that God said it was okay and that he was on their side. But everyone needs to know that God doesn't take sides. God takes over and Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. There is no fence sitting in God's kingdom because the devil owns the fence. Number seven, your Mormon leaders secretly and deceitfully practiced polygamy long after the 1890 manifesto was given to end polygamy. They secretly and illegally performed hundreds of polygamous marriages. And your president, John Taylor, claimed he had a vision from God that, ta that God told him that he was never to let a year go by that a child would not be born under the priesthood of polygamy. A slave owner never made such claims. Number eight, the bottom line. There is little, if any, difference between polygamy and slavery as a humanitarian issue. But every decent American wanted to wipe out the Mormon practice of polygamy. Only the Mormons condoned polygamy. You said accusing LDS members of condoning polygamy is like accusing Americans of condoning slavery. Would you please then take all your scriptures and cleanse them of the polygamy doctrine? Apologize to all the Mormons who have a polygamist heritage. Would you please tell all the present day polygamists that Joseph Smith was lying when he said that God commanded polygamy on threat of damnation? You can begin with wiping section 132 out of your doctrine and covenants, but your Mormon church would never do that. That. No, instead they just bring out another blanket to cover up all the errors, the lies, and the deceits of the past. The whitewashing and lies that go on and on and on and are coming from the Mormon hierarchy of this church is overwhelming and is so deceitful and so terribly dangerous to the souls of them who will not check it out. An escaped slave an abolitionist named Harriet Tubman said, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. When the slaves were freed after the Civil War, many of them didn't know what to do. They had no place to go. They didn't have skills other than the work that they had done as a slave. As slaves, everything had been previously uh, provided for them. Some of them wanted to remain slaves for that and for other various reasons. To some of them, freedom was frightening. Freedom had never been tasted by them. They were afraid to be free. How many people who are in polygamy groups have a chance to go free, but they won't go because they don't even know that they are slaves? And they are slaves. Slaves to a system that they believe God commanded, but they don't know or they refuse to believe that God never commanded polygamy. They don't know that God has opened the prison doors to freedom because they don't know they're slaves. Harriet Tubman said she could have freed a thousand more slaves if only they had known they were slaves. As I speak to polygamists right now, do you even know that you're involved in an illegal practice? Do you know that it's illegal not only in this state and in this country, but it's also illegal in God's kingdom? It wasn't until 25 years after I left the polygamy group that I realized that I was still a slave to their brainwashing doctrine. 
until I began my own journey to the truth I had no idea if polygamy was really God's will or not. All I knew was that it was abusive and I hated it. The Bible informs us that we can be slaves in our minds, and I was for decades. Jesus tells us that the truth will set us free. I was a slave in my own mind because I didn't know the truth. But when I discovered the truth, I was set free. I knew that polygamy was from men, not from God. And again, I would like to offer to anybody who would like this book, it's a Bible study on polygamy. If you want a biblical answer to polygamy in the Bible, you can discover God's heart on polygamy. All you have to do is call in or email, ask for the book. We need your address so we can mail it to you. You don't have to continue to live polygamy, and you can leave. You can just walk away from your polygamist husband or your polygamy group, and you don't have to fear God's judgment if you do. God will never hold you accountable to do something that you swore to do if what you're doing is against His will, and polygamy is against the will of God. The only true and living God will show you the truth and He will set you free from your slavery to a hellish system of mind control, brainwashing, financial slavery, and sexual obedience. We would love to help you. We will never ever force you to believe our way. We will merely show you what the Bible says about it and where it says it, answer your questions, and let you make up your own mind. And if you want to walk away to freedom, we'll help you do that too. The only condition that we have for helping you is that you want to escape your slavery. Right now, we're going to open up our telephone lines, and you can call in and, and give us your opinion on what we've talked about tonight. Uh, our telephone number is 801-973-8820, 801-973-TV20. And as we wait for the calls to come in, we will share our ministry message with you. You are watching Polygamy, What Love Is This? Broadcasting live from Salt Lake City, Utah. This program is the broadcast outreach of A Shield and Refuge Ministry. Shield and Refuge is a point of first contact for Mormon fundamentalists who question the doctrines of the religion or who are actively seeking for an opportunity to escape the polygamist lifestyle. Examining the claims of fundamentalist doctrine against the backdrop of biblical truth is central to our efforts. We invite you to contact us. Call toll-free at 877-425-9993 or email us at tv at aboutpolygamy.com. You are welcome to join us in our monthly support group, Life After Polygamy, where you can meet others like yourself who are searching for answers about polygamy and Mormon fundamentalism. We meet monthly in the Salt Lake City area. For more details about time and place, call us toll-free at 877-425-9993 or email us at tv at aboutpolygamy.com. We want you to know that we have made available to you some outstanding resources free of charge. You will find them at our website, www.whatloveisthis.tv. There you will find the DVD, Lifting the Veil of Polygamy, which documents the real life stories told firsthand of those who were lifted out of the culture of polygamy through the power and love of Jesus Christ. Also, free of charge to you is the booklet, Is Polygamy Biblical? It explores plural marriage in the context of God's Word and answers questions like, did God ever command polygamy? Is it part of God's plan? While you are at our website, make sure to take advantage of the archived episodes of this program, which can stream on demand directly to your computer. There are more than 100 shows to choose from. And if someone you know is unable to view this program via live broadcast, recommend that they visit this same website every Thursday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time to watch this show through live streaming video. Simply follow the links to the live streaming video page. If you are watching live tonight, we invite you to call us as we open our phone lines. The number is 801-973-TV20. That's 801-973-8820. Now, Back to Polygamy, mm. What Love Is This? with our host, Doris Hansen. 
Welcome back to our show. Uh, this is Polygamy, What Love Is This? And my name is Doris Hansen, and I am your host. And we've been talking about polygamy groups and the fear, the implanted lie, the implanted fear that they place in all of their members as they're born and raised in polygamy groups. Uh, we do have several calls coming in. Uh, we have one that's just coming up on the screen, so I'll wait just a second here. It looks like Herman is calling on line two. It from Provo. Okay. Herman. Yes. Yes, Herman, you are on the air. Thank you, Dave. I just want to tell you, I appreciate for what helping us to get my wife uh, name off of the LDS church. Well, you're certainly I welcome. I really appreciate that. Yes, absolutely welcome it's for it, that. <laughs> my wife is really happy about that. Good and for her. Another thing I, I, I uh, request for another letter from my granddaughter, she wants to leave the LDS church too. Oh, good. But I would appreciate so... it if you send, I give the address and everything, and I appreciate it if you send us another letter. Okay, well, it sounds like the domino effect. Let's hope for more, okay? Yes, another thing, Doris, you know, I loved your speech tonight because I see, I, you know, when the day I read in Sean, and I read, got into uh, Sean 3 16. He, God loved us so much that He forgave His own Son. Yes. If we believe in, believe in Him, we have eternal life. Right. That, that, that really hit me hard. That's right. It doesn't say if that. you believe in Him and live polygamy, you'll have eternal life. Yeah. Or, or believe right. in me. We don't have to believe in polygamy. We don't have we to, don't do have to leave, live in the Mormon church to yeah. get eternal life and yep. do all the things yep. what they want you to do. You That's know. right. Eternal life and, is uh, Jesus Christ. This is it's just I feel good now. I read the Book of Mormon every day, and there is no no feeling in there. I, I, my life is empty when I read that Book of Mormon. Matter of fact, I laugh about it and when I read in the Book of Mormon. But when I read in the Bible, I feel feel the Spirit of God right side of me. That's because God's That's Spirit wrote it. That's right. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Herbert. Another thing, we went on Tuesday. We went up there in Provo. And listen to that. Oh, yes, yes. How did that oh, go? Oh, it was so pretty, Doris, you couldn't believe it. Yeah? And that lady, when she, she her, his wife, uh -huh. was talking, some, she brought some beautiful scriptures out of the book, uh, the Bible. Uh -huh. It put the tears in my eyes when she read that. Well, she was God. a really humble woman. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. And, uh -huh. well, I appreciate for helping us that, Doris. You're welcome. Thank you, Herman. I hope you come to Provo someday with the same place okay. in, 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 in Provo okay. with the Baptist Church up there. Well, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. It, it, Maybe sometime I appreciate I will. that. You keep your work up. Thank you. Someday you we're, you know, it's time the Christians need to fight back. We do. We've, we, we've got to, the Bible says we need to contend for the faith once for all that's, given to the saints. So we need to do it. That's exactly right. We need that's to do it. That's the way I feel. You know, the Mormons put the Christians down all the time, even when the mission, I used to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And we put the religions down and they said, well, we're, you know, we have no right to do that. Well, to go out and put other it, religions down. That, well, you know. we're not putting other religions down. We're put, we're exposing false doctrine. That's all we're doing. Exactly right. And that's what we're doing, expose false doctrine. That's exactly right. Exactly right. That's right. Well, thanks, Herbin. Appreciate your call. And you have a good day. You too. Evening. Uh -huh. Bye. For our viewers uh, who maybe didn't know what he's talking about, the Provo event, uh, last week on our show, Carl Moore was our guest. He he was a, is a Native American. He's been on our show in August and also last week. And he does a dance. He's a Hopi Indian, and he does a dance to the hoops dancing. And he did, we showed it on our show. You can go to our archives on August. I think it's the first Thursday in August. And you can watch a seven-minute rendition of one of his dances. That's absolutely beautiful. And what we were talking about, as Herman said, he went to uh, Provo Baptist Church last Tuesday and uh, Carl was there doing another one of his dances and telling his story of how he uh, left being a Mormon Lamanite and became a child of God. Okay, there is an off-the-air question. Why isn't polygamy prosecuted in Utah? Because they don't want to do it. <laughs> 
Uh, I think that they've let the problem go too long. There's too many people. There's too, they're too huge of a political and a voting block now. And uh, the climate, the environment, as anything goes. And so why should they prosecute polygamy? Because it is stepping on some religious toes. Uh, they should have the right to practice their religion as they see fit. However, anytime we have freedoms, we have responsibilities. And freedom, if, if you don't take your responsibilities, we lose our freedoms. And that's what is going happen, happening all over uh, in, in various areas of our society today. Uh, polygamy is prosecutable if they would do it, but they won't. And there's too many now, 30 to 100,000 polygamists in the Intermountain West. It would be almost impossible to prosecute them all. And so the Attorney General's office came out and said, we will not prosecute polygamies, only the abuses that are taking place in them. But you know what? In this work that we've been doing, I have seen many abuses, many, many, many abuses, never touched. Nobody even looks at them. They won't crook, crook their neck to look at them in that direction. And it's sad. And Christians need to be on their knees praying that God would move in this culture. We have another call coming in. Uh, Diane is calling in Ogden. Hello, Diane. Hi. Hi. You're on the air. Thank you, Doris. Uh-huh. I just wanted to tell you thank you for your show and for everything that you do because I, I am ex-LDS, and as of today, I'm ex-Catholic. Um, I, I went to a meeting tonight at a Catholic church where the priest didn't even show up. You need to turn your TV down. I see, hear some feedback, and I think it's okay. confusing you. Is that better? As long as the sound on your TV is totally down. Okay, it's down. Is that better? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and um, they talked about voting your Catholic conscience, and everybody in the room was voting for Mitt Romney. And I am just appalled and shocked that nobody's taking into consideration that Jesus cares for the poor, that Jesus is the one we need to listen to. You know what, Diane? There's a lot that could be said about this subject bo on both sides of the issue, and we can't take sides on this show, and we're not going to talk politics on the show. Okay? We can't talk politics on this show. Well, actually, my, my point is if... If someone were to stand up and say they were from the church of, of Satan, I think the country would go into an upheaval over it. And, and we've got some serious, serious problems, especially in this state. We have serious and problems. And most of it is LDS related. Diane, I agree with you. There's serious problems in this state, but there's serious problems all over the country. And it, it goes down to one thing. We've kicked God out. Yes. We've kicked him out of our schools and out of our courts and out of our, our military every, and out of our prayers. Everything we do, we've kicked God out. That's why we have problems. And until we get God back in, and he's not going to, by the way, he won't barge in. He doesn't go where he's not invited. And if we don't invite him, he won't be there. People say, why does all this happen? Where is God? Well, did you invite him? You know, yeah. so let's not just pick on Utah on this. The whole country's in a mess. It's a spiritual mess. It's a spiritual That's problem. That's true. However, I have lived all over the world, and I've seen a lot of different things, and Utah is, it should actually succeed from the rest of the country. I mean, that's well, my if, opinion. If, I just... Let me put it like this, and then we'll have to end the call. Uh, the Mormon Church and all the polygamy groups, all of them claim to be the only true church and the only true kingdom of God. And if they were the only true kingdom of God, we wouldn't have that many problems here. So that just kind of puts it all in a nutshell. So thanks for calling, Diane. We have other calls to take. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay, we could do a lot with politics, but we won't. Uh, line two, we have Nikolai in Ogden. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Hello, Nikolai? Nicola. Nicola? Hi, it's Nicola. Nicola. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. You're on the air. Okay. It's, I, I can't hear, I guess I can't hear her now because I muted her. 
You told well, me to mute her, you, you so I can't hear her. My question you don't, is... You need to hear me um, on the phone, Nicola. Well, it's not TV. really a question. I was, well, I was going to say, it's interesting to say that um, seeing that Joseph Smith um, threatened Emma, so it seems to be funny that Joseph Smith was the one that died and Emma was the one that outlived him. That is a beautiful point. You know, that's something we haven't talked about in a long time. E Emma was threatened to be destroyed if she didn't accept polygamy, and she didn't. She hated it all her life. And Joseph Smith was the one that was killed young. Emma lived to be, what, 75 years old, I think. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, yeah. So that proves right there it's false prophecy, isn't it? Yeah. One false prophecy is all it takes to prove a false prophet. That's a good point. Thanks for, for bringing that up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good point. Yeah, false, uh, false prophet, you know, time is his greatest enemy because time will prove whether or not they're a pro true prophet or not. Okay, we have an off-the-air question. Anonymous. I don't understand that, the question there. Anonymous mainstream. Mainstream does practice polygamy because... Well, while I'm waiting for, for that to go on, I'm going to read another email that came in. Um, <clears throat> this next email is from someone who is in a polygamy group, and she obviously doesn't understand my own experiences of being born and raised in a polygamy group. And she said, all I want to say to you is, until you live, eat, breathe, play, and grow in a plural marriage-based community, you have no right to say the things you do about it. Every time you imply that me and women like me are brainwashed, I will and can say right back at you. I am not denying the fact that there are monsters among us, but I guarantee you will find monsters in every single organized religion out there. I'd like her to prove that. I'm not married, she said, so technically I cannot call myself a polygamist, but I am proud of my family and proud of my background, and I had the best childhood imaginable. So before you start throwing stones, maybe you should take a look at the whole story instead of looking at the examples that made it to the media. I often find people are afraid of what they don't understand. Open your eyes. Practice a little Christianity, and maybe you'll be surprised at what you learn. Well, obviously, this woman doesn't know. She hasn't watched our show enough, or she's just gone over her head, that indeed I was born and raised in a polygamy group. I did live and eat and breathe and play. I didn't get much playing in, but I grew up in a polygamy group. And I have studied the many different polygamy groups of well, as well. And we don't just talk about what hits the media. We talk about what goes on underlying as well. And I have met people from virtually every single polygamy group and there is so much fear and dread and shame and guilt and hate and prejudice, dishonor and hopelessness and helplessness and a total misconception of God, of Jesus, of heaven and of salvation in polygamy groups. I do have the right to talk about and to protest against the abuses and the deceitfulness of polygamy and their horrendous doctrine that makes polygamy their savior instead of Jesus Christ. You can deny that fact all you want, but that's just exactly the way it is. Okay, we have a call coming in on line three. Sarah is calling from Midvale. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Hi, yeah, this is Sarah here in Midvale. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, I just uh, appreciate what you're doing, and I pray for you all the time. Thank and, you, Sarah. Uh, I just wanted to share with you, you know how in the Doctrine and Covenants, it's... It, uh, in section 132, how it refers to the new and ever everlasting covenant, you know, Joseph Smith's new and everlasting covenant. Well, anyway, in the Bible, the everlasting covenant that God made with Israel is so different. It's so oh, beautiful. Yeah. Huh. It says in Jeremiah 32, verse 40, it says, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them, to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts, or his reverence, you know, reverence for God, mm -hmm. in their hearts, that they shall not depart from me. 
You know, isn't that beautiful? And it he is. goes on to say, Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. Yeah. And I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. Isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. And it just shows God's heart for the people. Yeah. It's it his does. And work. then he goes on to say, For thus saith the Lord, Like as I have brought all this evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Mm -hmm. But the evil, of course, was brought upon them basically because of their own, you know, rebellion. Right. But, right. Uh, but right. then he goes on to say, So I will bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. So it's like God is, is doing for, for his people. I mean, he doesn't expect the people to, you know, uh, I mean, he expects them to be obedient. Right, right. But he doesn't make laws that they, you know, can't. Obey. You know, Sarah, that's, a, that's such a good point, and we've said it before, and I need to say it again right now. In polygamy groups especially, they say that we have to sacrifice for God, and we have to sacrifice for His kingdom. But you know what? It was God who sacrificed for us. He sure did. And that new covenant is the most beautiful new covenant there is, and Joseph Smith thought he would replace it with polygamy? Oh, uh, no. It's it, awful. It, it's just, it, there's no comparison. It's right. Just, what God does is, is so wonderful and so beautiful. It is. Thank you, Sarah, so much. We appreciate God that bless insight. You. Thank you. Uh huh. Bye. Bye. Okay, that's a very good point. Compare the Bible with what the Book of Mormon Doctrine and Covenant says any day, and you're going to find beauty and truth in the Bible. Ron from West Valley is calling. Hello, Ron. Hello there. Hi, Doris. Hello, you're on hey, the air. I really loved your parallel between slavery and polygamy tonight. And I'm glad that you brought up that uh, they still are unwilling to remove Doctrine and Covenants 132 from mm -hmm. the Doctrine and Covenants. Mm -hmm. um, the one point that I, I want to bring up is that um, I've heard a comparison. I've heard a, uh, it stated that, you know, if they're so eager to say that they don't practice polygamy, um, I don't understand how that correlates with the fact that if a man loses his wife, he can be sealed to another wife. And I don't exactly know the terminology for that, polygamy by proxy or whatever, but the men are also taught that the more wives they have, the greater God they're going to be in the afterlife. And uh, That's right. That's, that's right. Uh, I think that's uh, contradictory. And you know what's interesting is even with Joseph Smith, he had 34 wives, the, the uh, 33 besides Emma, and Emma wasn't sealed to him. Uh, the first wife, she, she was sealed to him long after many of his other wives, plural wives, were sealed to him. Uh, and, and that ceiling is, is what is supposed to be the heavenly living of the polygamy. Uh, and yeah, well, you know, they're eager to change other doctrines. Yeah. Like, you now you can have coke, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but, you know, for some reason, they, they're unwilling to uh, unstick that from their, their doctrine when they've changed so many right. other doctrines. That's right. That's basically what I had to say. That's exactly right, and you're right on, and I appreciate your comments. Thanks for taking the call. You're welcome. And they do, they do practice polygamy, not physically like the polygamy groups do, but they certainly practice it spiritually. It's still a doctrine they believe in. So when they say they don't believe in polygamy, they do believe in polygamy. They just are not practicing it physically right now. Okay, we have Sue calling in Roy. Hello, Sue. Sue. Doris. Hello, Sue. You're on the air. Hi, Doris. You, I just have to tell you that you... Hello? Yes, you're on the air. We can hear you. Okay. Um, you have got to be the bravest lady I've ever seen to be doing what you're doing in Utah. Oh. I just really <laughs> admire you, and I just think you're a really classy lady. Well, thank you. I just you. have to tell you that. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate your comments. It's nice okay, to, and to be encouraged. Okay, and for all those women in Utah, if you vote for Romney, you're going to be setting the clocks back about 50 years. <laughs> well, we don't want to do politics on the show, but thanks for your comments, Sue. Okay, bye. Uh, bye. Oh, my. It's getting close to the election, so I guess we're going to get comments. You know, we had a um, uh, call, I think it was last week or the week before, a telephone call from a viewer, and she asked the question, 
why is Emma the only wife of Joseph Smith that they ever talk about? That's a great question. Uh, and it's, it is true that a good many of the Mormon people don't even know that Joseph Smith had 34 wives. They just think that he was sealed to women, but that he didn't have actually physical wives. Uh, and by the way, 34 is the minimum count that we use. And there's some good evidence that he had many, many more wives than that. And we wonder why only um, uh, they, they do, the Mormon church only presents Emma as being uh, his only wife when it was Joseph Smith himself who introduced polygamy into the Mormon culture, into the Mormon doctrine. It was Joseph Smith who preached that polygamy was a requirement to achieve godhood. It was Joseph Smith who told his pers prospective plural brides that an angel from heaven threatened him to kill him on the spot if he didn't practice polygamy. But he'd been living polygamy already for several years uh, when he told that story. But when today's whitewashed Mormon history is, pre pre is presented, we find that, that only Emma is mentioned and only the marriage to Emma is discussed. And we, we wonder why the Mormons don't tell the truth. Would the missionaries tell their prospective converts that Joseph Smith had 34 wives? Before they baptize them into the Mormon church, does, do they tell them that he had 34 wives? And the obvious answer is no, they don't. Uh, it's very doubtful that very many people would join the Mormon church if they knew that their leader, Joseph Smith, actually had that many wives. And of course, polygamy groups themselves uh, they don't have very many people that come in from outsiders because outsiders aren't interested in polygamy. So uh, Joseph Smith uh, penned uh, the Doctrine and Covenants section 132, which is the revelation on polygamy, and yet they only teach about Emma. That is a good question, and we do challenge the powers that be in this state and in this church to step up to the plate with honesty and to uh, present the honest history of the church to the people. Um, we uh, have run out of time now, so it's time to, to uh, give my closing comments. I want to thank all of you who called in and, and for all of our viewers who are watching the show. Uh, you know, Mormon myth teaches that there was a war in heaven where Jesus and Satan, who claim, they claim are spiritual brothers, that they each offered a plan of salvation uh, for the souls of the people that would be born on planet Earth. And Jesus' plan was to save by personal choice, which they call free agency, but Lucifer, or Satan's plan, was to save by force so that everyone would be saved. Well, Jesus' plan was received. Satan's plan was rejected. But isn't it interesting that the plan of force and guilt and fear and coercion is the plan that is used by all the various Mormon religions? And tragically, Jesus' true biblical plan of salvation of eternal life has never been taught by any of the Mormon religious groups. And that's a shame that individuals in this culture will not think for themselves and discover the error of what they're taught. Jesus said we're just supposed to love God with all our mind. That means that we test everything that we believe. And God's testimony is in the Bible. God gave his life on the cross for us. And how powerful is that in your journey to the truth? Jesus died to save you from eternal hell. And if you reject his way, and all of Mormonism does, then you cannot be saved from eternal hell, and you will remain lost for eternity. In the story of the prodigal son in Luke 16, it tells us that the son who walked away came to his senses one day and he saw, decided to get up and go to his father. And then he got up and he went to his father. Well, you know, we pray that this culture will also come to their senses. And when they do that, they will get up and go and go to the God of their salvation. And why don't you make that eternal choice tonight? Good night.